Alright, welcome to a quick run through on how to install and configure the Pterodactyl module for WHMCS made by Trickster. So this is uh, the module that we use over at Crydent.net if any of you are wondering. So it's pretty much bulletproof and up to spec with everything you need. So um, it's important to uh, note that you do install the correct module, there are different ones. Uh, this is probably the only one working right now for 0 0.7, especially with the functionality. Um, so this is probably the one you're looking for if you're on this video. However, this tutorial will probably work on the, an older version of this module, uh, Deathtroid's version. Uh, you can check you're on the right version by either just clicking the link in the description uh, or up here at the top on GitHub. It tells you who the author is. Um, so trick to the tux. That's the kind of newer, more more functional one. Uh, once again, the, the link will be in the description, so uh, feel free to just click that link instead of trying to find this. So, first thing we want to do is obviously download it. So, click download. It will download, and then you want to extract it. Uh, so, let me do that. So, now you've extracted it. Open up the folder. And... Uh, here this pterodactyl folder with all these uh, these license and readme files um, this is what we're looking for here so now we've got this what we want to do is we want to uh, connect to whatever server uh, you're adding this to whatever website you're adding this to we want to uh, connect to FTP or SFTP or whatever uh, and then you want to um, go to your WHMCS module I mean WHMCS folder on your website Inside the WHMCS folder, you'll see this folder called modules. You want to go in there, and then in there, you'll see this folder called servers. You want to go in there, and if you've already installed a pterodactyl module before, whether it be this one or a different one, uh, you first want to remove that. It shouldn't actually cause any issues, but I just advise removing it in, 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 you know, in case first before uploading the new one. So you want to remove the old module and then drag and drop the new module onto this just to check that it's installed correctly if we go into this folder it will be a pterodactyl.php file if you haven't got that php file inside this folder then it's not going to know which file to open to actually load the module so if you for example uploaded this folder here or renamed this folder to pterodactyl and then uploaded that um, and you go inside this folder and there's another folder called pterodactyl that won't that won't work So you need to have the PHP file within The pterodactyl file within the servers folder within the modules folder within WHMCS. So now we've uploaded it That's Pretty straightforward. What we'll do next is we'll go over to pterodactyl uh, and we will um, generate a API key so um, if you come over here uh, and click create new, these are the permissions that you want on Pterodactyl, he says, scrolling frantically to find them. Here you go, um, so these are the permissions we want. So if we bring that over here, we want to, this is kind of annoying. Um, Alright, so we want to give it the eggs, locations, nests, nodes, packs permission, and then we want to give it a read and write for users and servers. Um, so just so you guys can clearly see, let me just blow this up for you. I'm having some real difficulties over here at the moment, guys. Bear with me, sorry. There we go. Just so you can see. There you go, that's the permissions you want. Make sure you get that right, because not getting that right can cause issues. Alright, so now what you want to do is set some name for the API key. And then you click this beautiful create credentials button, and now you've got an API key. So uh, now we've installed the module on WHMCS, and we have generated an API key. We can actually go over to WHMCS and configure it. So let's start by adding a new server so if you come to whmcs this is what it will look like by default normally a little bit um yours might look a bit different but i'm sure you can work it out you want to come over to this servers tab here um and then you want to add a new server so you only need to do this once and this and this will be the kind of 
web server. You don't need to add a new server for each game server you have. So um, let's uh, make a example server. Uh, for the host name, that will be the URL that you use to access your, your game panel. Um, so for example, it might be, you know, something like that. Um, in this case, because it's a test, the example server is just on an IP because no need for a domain. So I'm going to use an IP there, but you'd enter your host name there. This is probably the part that most people will get wrong. Um, but yeah, that needs to be the URL to Pterodactyl. Um, so once you've done that, uh, you want to probably set the IP address as well. All of this information isn't needed, but if you want to fill it out, that won't be any problem. And the only other thing we need to do is come down here to this Pterodactyl. Um, this server details bit, sorry. And we want to set this to the Pterodactyl module that we installed. Obviously, if you don't see this, that means that you probably did this part wrong here, uh, where we uploaded the module. So double check that that's all right. If you see this, then you're probably going to have no problems here. The username it doesn't matter, but the password will be this API key over here. So you want to paste the IP API key in there. And then we want to, I think, test connection works without saving it. That's correct. So now we can just save if we know it's working. And we are almost good to add a product. We just need to create a group first. So this is just like a little kind of like funny thing about WHMCS. Um, so what we want to do is just name this whatever. I'm just going to name it Pterodactyl Group. And you only once again need to add the one Pterodactyl server we just added into this group. Now that's pretty important that you add this server we just added into this group and click save changes. So you can see here we've got our group that we just made and we've got our server that we just added and our server is in our group here look and you don't need to add any more servers or any more groups at this point uh, and you know as long as um, sorry last pass is just entering my password there as long as this is saying successful uh, you're good to go uh, for this part now what we want to do is we want to come over and we want to add a product and then we want to test the deployment um, so let me uh, create a new product I'd put this on other products slash service just as a recommendation and then we're going to name this like Minecraft test um, and hopefully I remember which service I'm supposed to be testing this on because our test environment does not have all the game server types so um, pro, note, pro tip you want to untick this box right here this will be ticked by default you want to untick that. The rest of this information here, you guys can fill out as you see fit. Um, it won't impact deployment, um, so that's fine. You can de do that information as you see fit. What um, I'm going to do is come over to this module settings tab here, and we want to drop this down. And just like in the server groups, we want to select Pterodactyl. And then here's our server group we added earlier, um, the Pterodactyl group. This is how it knows which it, like endpoint or API to actually send the request to. So once you've done that, um, we're getting pretty close to being ready. What we want to do is we want to set these limits. Now these limits um, work the same way as if you go into Pterodactyl and click create new server. Um, if you read here, look, it says, if you do not want to assign swap space to a server, simply put zero for the value or minus zero to allow unlimited swap space. So if we come over to the WHMTS, swap space here, we can either enter zero to disable it, we can enter the amount of swap that we want, for example, 256 meg, or we can enter minus one for unlimited swap. So um, I'm gonna just put minus one for this test, so hopefully nothing breaks, to allow unlimited um, disk space, it's just zero. So I'm going to I'm going to allow unlimited pretty much everything here because that's just much easier for me. Um, and now we need is the location ID, the nest ID, the egg ID uh, and the rest of this stuff here. Um, you guys don't need to fill out, but if you know what you're doing, then obviously you can. You probably also want to select this uh, box here to actually automatically deploy the servers when you receive payment. But for this example, I am going to select this one here because that's just easier for my example um, because it gives me a bit more control over the actual deployment. 
if you're also testing you're really unsure of what you're actually doing here it's probably worth checking this box at first um, because you'll see in a minute how it allows you to do a bit of, it allows you to quicker debug so um, location ID so how do you get the location ID the nest ID the egg ID what the fuck is the nest and the egg ID uh, so let's go through that quickly so locations are pretty straightforward when you come to this location tab in pterodactyl you can see the ID here so say that you want to deploy it in this digital ocean um, location here you would just put one as the location ID because that is the location ID here this will kind of like obviously expand uh, sorry you, you'll get like more options here the more locations you add and it'll be like two three four five six seven nine ten um, so that's really straightforward um, with the location ID now the nest ID and the egg ID for the actual game server so if you come over to this nests tab in pterodactyl um, you can see here are the nests um, so these you can think of these like genres or like um, categories for different types of game servers so um, if we go into Minecraft for example in the Minecraft nest there are these eggs um, and you have these these are the different types of games the best example is probably source engine because that is literally the, the same engine on all of these games and these are all the games that run on the source engine so it's pretty pretty straightforward um, so what we'll do is we'll use Minecraft as, as an example and I believe I'm supposed to be testing on Spigot I think let me just quickly check that guys Spigot yep so um we want to come out here so we want to get the nest ID for Minecraft so it's here on the left or in the URL as well um, there you go you can also grab it from that URL um, so the nest ID that we need here is one so let's come over to here let's put that nest ID in there and then the egg that we want for spigot is four so we'll put four as the egg ID we don't need to assign a dedicated IP although that is optional of course and everything else is optional so at this point I'm gonna save the server I feel like I've missed something but that's fine if I have so now what we want to do is we want to test it so normally people create a user in their WHMCS which they can test things on I've gone ahead and done this already so this is my little test user here I'm gonna log in as the client and I'm gonna go ahead and make the order so if I come through to Minecraft test here free Minecraft server that sounds like a pretty good deal to me so I take one run through the checkout process and then because I have selected the wrong option by the looks of things hold on oh whoops I selected the wrong box I meant to select that one that's fine though so it, it looks like the server is deployed automatically um, I made that order and it looks like it went through fine it says active here um, and in the client area it also says active so if we were to go into pterodactyl and look at the servers you can see here that it's been created um, a server for our little test user um, and I won't start this because I don't think this is an actual like real thing but um, yeah so um, that's as pretty much straightforward as it gets um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually purposely break um, the product ID and pretend that I made a mistake so that I can show you guys how to find out how to fix these mistakes yourself because that's much quicker than annoying someone to try and tell you what you've done wrong so um, let's assume that I entered the wrong location ID here so I'm just gonna enter 888 um, so I'm gonna save that um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna order a new service have another free Minecraft server that sounds great to me complete order now this one you'll notice won't show as active you know like the, the top one here this one instantly went to active because it automatically deployed so this one's just sitting as pending and that's because it failed to deploy so if we were to come into the admin area in WHMCS and we look at this uh, latest order here um, let's go over to it it says pending here as well so we can try and create this let's click create and then it will throw us an error um, now the error won't be that descript 
it says couldn't find any nodes satisfying the request. That's actually a pretty descriptive error to be honest, I lied. Um, <laughs> some errors aren't descriptive, sometimes it will just give you like an error code. Um, for example, if I come over here and try and accept this order, actually gives me the same error. Okay, to be honest, Trix has done a better job than I expected there. Um, that's kind of fucked my story a little bit, but um, we'll assume that we don't understand the error. So what you can do is you can come over to setup and then under, you can come over to utilities, sorry, and under logs, there's this module log here. Now this will slow your website down, so I advise that you only run this and emphasis on only run this when you're actually testing, make sure to remember to turn this off. So when you enable this and we try to run the create function again, we still get this error, but if we come over to the module log and we refresh, you can see all of this stuff. Now this is the communication back and forth between the two, um, between Teradax and WHMCS, right? So um, you can read through these and normally it'll be in the in the top two um, responses, what, what's going wrong here. So it'll say no nodes satisfying the requirements specified for automatic deployments can be found. So that's a really similar error to the one we get in the game in, in um, you know, up here. Uh, it's a really, really similar error. But in some cases you won't get um, a very useful error uh, and this is extremely handy especially if you're gonna go and then ask people for help if you're gonna try and contact say trickster or anybody else for help with this they're gonna need this kind of information here be careful though it can contain uh, confidential client information so keep that in mind before you just go throwing it around um, you want to make sure that you're not also exposing customer information there so um, we know exactly what the issue is here. Uh, we know that the issue is with um, the location being wrong. So what you could obviously do is obviously go in and then fix that, uh, and that's pretty pretty easy to, to resolve. I'm not going to do that right now because there's really no need. Uh, we've got a test server here. Uh, I hope you guys will have a nice day, and feel free to post any questions in the comments, and we'll try and keep on top of them also.